This is 12 News at 5. Tonight at 5, we are just 15 hours away from all New Yorkers ages 16 and over being eligible for the COVID-19 vaccine. That means that all adults in the state can get a shot and make appointments starting tomorrow at 8 a.m. It's something many have been waiting for for more than a year as the light at the end of the tunnel is near. Keenan Dixon joins us in the studio tonight to break it all down for us. Keenan, what can people expect when eligibility opens tomorrow? Scott, it's going to be a large bulk of the population that will become eligible, meaning that a higher demand for a steadily rising supply in the county. County Executive Jason Garner received his first dose at the SUNY Broom Ice Center this morning. And while there, I asked him about the supply. He addressed it with a few figures. 18,000 doses have been administered at the county-run site, with another 4,600 set to be administered just this week. Along with the doses given to the county, there's a state-run mass vaccination site in Johnson City, along with pharmacies in the county, that are able to give the vaccine to those who are eligible. Garner says that it's important to get people their vaccine as soon as possible and thinks the supply will pass the demand very soon, making it easier for, easier for people to schedule their appointments. The state is getting so many doses and giving it out to the county that I think anybody that wants a dose will be able to get one. I would say within a month, you know, there should be no problem with demand. You should be able to just sign up and, and get your appointment very quickly and, and get in and, and get vaccinated. Garner says that the more people that can get vaccinated, the quicker the county can return to normalcy, and those restrictions can continue to be lifted. Keenan, thank you. Now, of course, the question on everyone's mind, where can I get that vaccine once I'm eligible? Where there are a number of different places. First off, let's look at the states that you can see here on the New York State vaccine site. And if we look here, we can see SUNY Binghamton, which is giving the Pfizer vaccine. You can see it kind of tells you which shot you would be signing up for. Johnson City, yes, there are appointments available, and then you would click on that, go through kind of the checklist to say how you're eligible, and then you could sign up. Let's look at a different site. For example, if we go to the county site, unfortunately, if we kind of scroll here and say let's click on the 9th, unfortunately, as they told us, a lot of those appointments are filled up or things like that. But then even pharmacies are eligible, so let's go to CVS, for example, most of them fully booked, but hey, if we take it out Binghamton here, there are available vaccines. So it's all about making sure you look in multiple places. Now, a reminder, you can't make an appointment until you are eligible. So for many of us, that means tomorrow at 8 a.m. for Broome County appointments. As we said, according to the website, those are filled, but always check back. Now to Tioga County, where the health department said today that UHS is giving the vaccine out this week. This is at the UHS Appalachian location. Now, a Facebook post says that they will be there each morning this week, and you do need an appointment. They also say that there will be a drive through clinic at UHS. We go on Saturday. They said the Johnson & Johnson single-dose vaccine will be given then. Well, starting today, Pennsylvania is also expanding their vaccine eligibility. They are now in Phase 1B. What that means, according to the PA Department of Health, is people in congregate settings, first responders, postal service workers, education, and many others are now able and available to get the vaccine. That list expands next week and becomes every adult in the Commonwealth two weeks from now. The Biden administration is touting increased vaccination numbers in the fight against COVID-19, with more than 3 million doses administered a day. But new infections have increased for the fourth week in a row. Natalie Brand has more tonight from the White House. Standing next to a masked Easter bunny at the White House, President Biden acknowledged those still struggling from the pandemic. The virus is not gone, and the second year in a row, most will be apart from their families. The U.S. hit a vaccination record over the weekend with more than 4 million doses administered in a single day, but less than a quarter of the U.S. population is fully vaccinated. The White House COVID response team says new cases have ticked up for the fourth straight week fueled by young people spreading the more transmissible variant first detected in the UK. It comes as more schools reopen and youth sports resume. We really want to remain vigilant with regard to the guidance there, as well as um, uh, uh, testing strategies that could help prevent clusters. A new CDC study shows just one dose of the Moderna or Pfizer vaccine is around 80 percent effective at preventing infection. But administration health officials say they're not yet considering a one-shot strategy. Although we always continue to keep an open mind, we consider the route that we're on now is the best route. Dr. Anthony Fauci also warns that infection rates may not go down as a result of warmer temperatures during the summer season. I don't think we should even think about relying on the weather to bail us out of anything we're in right now. 
The White House also announced it will soon open three more federally run mass vaccination sites in South Carolina, Colorado and Minnesota. Natalie Brand, CBS News, the White House. Well, today, the CDC released updated cleaning guidance saying the risk of infection from touching a surface is low and that cleaning once a day is usually enough to sufficiently remove the virus. The agency also says spraying disinfectant on outdoor spaces is not necessary and it's discouraged the use of fumigation and electrostatic spraying methods. Well, now let's take a look at this map from the New York Health Department. It's tracking how many people have gotten the vaccine by county. So let's start with Broome County. A little tough to see here, but around 36.7% of the population has gotten at least one dose. To Tioga County now, where that number is around 25%, just over that 25.1. As you see, multiple different counties there. We have Shenango, Tioga. If you go to all of them, you can see what that number is and see their percents, respectively. Well, now here is a live look at our nice egg stadium. A relatively cool day for baseball as we're a month away from the Rumble Ponies taking the field of Minghamton. Howard, although I wouldn't mind playing baseball today. No, no, my goodness. What a beautiful day it was today. And, uh, uh, you know, if you enjoy today, we've got another day like this ahead coming soon. There's a look at the overall satellite and radar here throughout the Northeast. We are in what I would refer to as a sweet spot. We've got some rain into New England, and we've got a batch of rain southern Ontario, northwestern Pennsylvania. Uh, uh, but it's not neither one of those are going to touch us here tonight because high pressure is in control and you can see some of those high clouds from that rain in western new york and western pennsylvania out there right now but they are again we're not going to be seeing any rain temperatures in the 50s just about as nice as you can get here this evening shows some high clouds coming in uh, by 11 o'clock we're into the upper 30s and if those high clouds don't get too thick could be a beautiful sunset ahead here tonight we'll talk about what you can expect for the rest of the week coming up Howard, thank you. Even as New York and other states legalize recreational marijuana, there are still several federal hurdles to deal with. The drug is still federally illegal, which poses significant challenges even in legal states. One of the biggest challenges is financing, as most federally insured banks and lenders won't do business with marijuana-related companies. Because of the drug is federally illegal, it can't be moved across state lines, which experts say poses significant challenges in the growing industry. Every, you know, state's marijuana industry is insular, meaning it is confined to the borders of that state. And so you have to grow the product, process the product, transport it, sell it all in one state. And so that, that presents a lot of challenges for businesses who are trying to grow and, you know, look nationally and be able to distribute their product across state lines. Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer recently told 12 News he supports legalizing the drug at the federal level. In New York, a number of changes today for different businesses as the pandemic restrictions continue to loosen. The 11 p.m. curfew currently in place for casinos, movie theaters, bowling alleys, billiard halls, gyms, and fitness centers is being lifted tonight. The curfew for food and bars and the midnight curfew for catered events will remain in effect. And casinos in Pennsylvania are also now able to stay open later. That's a sound we like to hear. Starting today, PA casinos are allowed to be open past 11 p.m. and serve you a drink at the slot or table. They also say that you can get a drink without ordering food. The VP and general manager at the casino at Penn National Racecourse shared some of the challenges that they're facing. The biggest challenge that we really are facing since the pandemic is really the staffing challenges because uh, it's really hard to get people back on. We're trying to open up more restaurants. And it's not an industry um, situation. It's if you look at restaurants in Pennsylvania and bars, you know, these restrictions are starting to open. But it's really hard for people to hire people and get people back to work. Now we're working to talk to Tioga Downs about the casino changes here in New York. We'll have that coming up tonight at 6. Well, sad news out of Long Island tonight. A driver and a passenger are dead after a truck hit an over over like, highway overhead space. Excuse me. This happened on Long Island on the Nassau Expressway in the county there. Police say the truck left the roadway before hitting the overpass. Both people inside were pronounced dead at the scene. No other cars were involved in the crash. Several lanes were closed for several hours. And here at home, traffic changes this week in Johnson City. Here's a live look at Route 201. The State Department of Transportation says starting tomorrow, the right lane will be closed from 5 a.m. until 10 a.m. Specifically, that is from Harry L. Drive to the New York 17 West Ramp. And that's the spot you're looking at right now. The DOT says it will be closed. The same times on Wednesday and Thursday as weather is permitting. And now just the lane 
and just the lane will be closed. They say the 201 south ramp to 17 west will remain open. Oweco residents gathered in front of the Central Fire Station on North Ave today to give the bell top a farewell. The Central Fire Station had a proper send-off. It was lowered to the ground to be restored. Jack Arby explains how it will all unfold. Well, back when the bell was first placed in the Central Fire Station Tower in 1911, William Howard Taft was in the White House, and a brand new Model T would only set you back about $700. Well, 110 years later, the bell is off to be restored and then placed in a new home where we'll all be able to see it. The bell emerged from a vent opening at the top of the tower, I'm told, was just an inch wider than it needed to be to fit the bell through. It was then lowered safely by crane down to a truck waiting on Temple Street. From there, it'll head to Ohio to be restored as part of the Owego host team's long-awaited steamer house project. The new building will house the bell as well as the host team's 1866 steam fire engine in a 1939 Stamford hose truck. That steamer house building will be glass walls, so you can have 360 viewing of the steam fire engine. In addition to that, the top of the steamer house building will have this antique fire bell, which we just took out of Owego Central Fire Station. Construction on the steamer house is set to begin later this year, as long as the funding is available. And I'll tell you just how they pulled it off, coming up tonight on 12 News at 6. In Owego, Jack Arpey, 12 News. Nice piece of history. Thanks, Jack. We'll still to come here on 12 News at 5, a big decision in Major League Baseball. Now, the latest on why the league has decided to move its all-star game this year out of Georgia. That is all next, but first, here's a live look at downtown Binghamton. This is from up on top of the Security Mutual building. Pretty nice out there today. Howard's going to be back with us to give us a full check on the forecast when we return. Welcome back. Businesses in Ithaca and Elmira, along with the community, banded together to replace a bicycle stolen from a Southern Tier teen with autism. 14-year-old Gabriel Osterhout was so happy when a new bike was delivered. His special three-wheelchair bike was stolen from his backyard. Now his dad took to Facebook to ask if anyone had seen it. Many responded, and when his dad found the bike, it was unfortunately too late. Thieves had already ripped it apart. The community then raised $500 for a new bike for Gabe. Then Ken's Auto Body in Elmira offered to fix and customize the bike. Bobby Hobbs with McGuire Subaru in Ithaca then stepped in and offered to buy a new bike and deliver it to Gabe. That was a really happy moment for me. I'm so glad that McGuire's came and helped me out there. It was really nice of them and I greatly appreciate it. We have been getting several, several donations and I just greatly appreciate it all really much, really a lot. Thank you guys. The bike couldn't have come at a better time because April is Autism Awareness Month and John says that his son is a smart kid and puts a smile on their faces every day. With the money that was raised for a new bike, Gabe says that he is going to give it back to kids in need. Well, the Supreme Court dismissed a ruling today that former President Donald Trump violated the First Amendment when he blocked followers from his Twitter account. The high court ruled the case is moot because Trump is no longer in office. A district court had initially ruled that Trump blocking Twitter followers excluded them from a public forum on an appeals court agreed. Now, Twitter banned the former president from the site after the election due to violating its policies related to the Capitol Hill riot. At one point, former President Trump had 89 million followers on Twitter before the platform suspended his account. The Twitter users who had been blocked had hoped the court would leave the ruling in place as a guide for future government officials. Well, the political fallout continues from Major League Baseball's decision to move its all-star game out of Georgia to the, to, in response to the state's new voting law. The new Georgia law shrinks the window for sending its absentee ballots, limits the number of ballot drop boxes available to voters, and gives more control of local elections to state lawmakers, and makes it a crime to give food and water to people who are waiting in a line to vote. Georgia Governor Brian Kemp says while there was no fraud in the last election, the law is needed to keep future elections secure. Major League Baseball caved to fear and lies from liberal activists. They ignored the facts of our new election integrity law and they ignored the consequences of their decision on our local community. Atlanta Mayor Keisha Lance Bottoms says she respects Major League Baseball's decision. But I don't like the fact that we have been put in this position by our state legislature and our governor because the people of Georgia will suffer. 
Ocob County, Georgia estimates it will lose up to $100 million in revenue as a result of the MLB decision. And a quick reminder, tonight is the NCAA Men's Basketball Tournament Championship game. The coverage starts tonight on WBNG right here at 9 p.m. Our 11 p.m. newscast is scheduled to go on late because of the game. You'll be able to catch it all right after the game is over. This is StormTrack 12. You can see moving through the northeast, we've got an area of low pressure sitting south of Newfoundland, and we've also got a little disturbance down to our south and west. And we are right in the perfect location to enjoy the type of weather that we're seeing out there today. So let's take a closer view, and you'll see that that batch of rain coming through essentially southern Ontario, not quite into western New York, but northwestern PA. Uh, this is going to bring some high clouds to us, but the batch of precipitation will stay out of our area and then as I mentioned there that uh, huge area of low pressure spinning in some precipitation into interior Maine and uh, Vermont and New Hampshire well mostly New Hampshire at this point but uh, yeah mainly clear skies for today temperatures we'll get to those in a moment but the winds are a little bit gusty out there here uh, this afternoon gusting to 23 miles an hour in Binghamton and I show the relative humidity because I'm going somewhere with this you see the relative humidities are in the 20s to low 30 percent range and that's low DEC has our area in a moderate fire risk today. Now, again, that um, uh, fires, this is all from the DEC website. Fires are not likely to become serious, but because of the gusty winds, they can spread rapidly. So uh, something to keep in mind is those, uh, uh, these dry, sunny, breezy days here in the summertime uh, can produce varying levels of wildfire danger. So something to please keep in mind. And temperatures, 50s to near 60 in a couple of spots. Right now, nobody actually at 60. So, quiet evening weather ahead here. High pressure holds tight for tomorrow as well. Mainly dry on Wednesday, and we're looking at an unsettled period later this week. The future track here through 9 o'clock shows some of those high clouds from that disturbance to our west. But notice, no blips of green, so we're dry here tonight. Tomorrow morning, 6 o'clock, we're going to start off with clear skies. Another chilly night, but lunchtime tomorrow, yep, expect bright sun. Even into the afternoon, just plenty of sunshine all the way through the day. Partly cloudy to clear into the early overnight hours. And then as we head into Wednesday, maybe a little bit more cloud cover. And there's a very slight chance of a shower overnight Tuesday into very early Wednesday morning. Temperature forecast by 11 o'clock, we're going to be in the upper 30s to near 40 degrees. Tomorrow morning, upper 20s to low 30s. So again, it's going to be cold to start things off. 9 o'clock, we're in the low to mid 40s. And by the afternoon, yeah, we're going to be in the 50s to near 60 tomorrow. 31, few clouds tonight, range 28 to 33. In fact, uh, upper 50s. Mid-60s on Wednesday, though, a slight chance of a shower, especially early in the day. 67 on Thursday. Near 60 on Friday with a chance of some showers there. And I mentioned that unsettled period late week. Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday, each one of those days has at least a 30% chance of a few showers as we stand right now. All right, Howard, thank you. Well, next at 5, a unique museum in Egypt. Yeah, we're going to show you how the country was celebrating its opening when we come back. And I will faithfully discharge. The duties of the office of mayor. The duties of the office of mayor. According to the best of my ability. According to the best of my ability. Congratulations, Mayor Summers. There's a new mayor in the village of Whitney Point. The village posted Jason Summers taking the oath of office on their Facebook page today. You see it right there. Best of luck to Mayor Summers. And now to a different type of new. Egypt inaugurated a new museum on its way in the only, only way that the country with thousands of years of history can. Nearly two dozen mummies were given the royal treatment on their way to their new home. Ian Lee has the story. It's a celebration fit for a king, or rather, a pharaoh. Egypt rolled out the red carpet for 22 mummies. They paraded through the streets of Cairo with the kind of pageantry not seen in thousands of years. With great pomp and circumstance, the mummies are getting their due. These are the kings of Egypt. I mean, these are the pharaohs. Um, and so it is a way of showing respect. Officials moved the mummies from the iconic Egyptian museum to a new home, one better suited for their preservation. 
Modern-day chariots with special shocks carried Egypt's past kings and queens. The former rulers arrived with a royal salute. While the country's current ruler, President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi, greeted his predecessors. These ancient monarchs connect the country to its past, but also help with the present. People should understand that these pharaohs are incredibly important historically and also important now because this is part of the Egypt's economy. The blessing of the pharaoh looking after the people of Egypt, even in the afterlife. Ian Lee, CBS News. On the parade included one of Egypt's most famous pharaohs, Ramses II. Well, Target is once again offering coupons for people who bring in old car seats for recycling. The event runs through April 17th at all locations. It also is contact-free. Shoppers can drop off old car seats in a box and get a digital coupon when they scan a code using their mobile device. The coupon is good for 20% off a variety of baby gear. The store says that it will accept damaged or expired car seats even. If your car seat is still in good repair, you may consider donating it or giving it to a friend rather than recycling. Well, check this out. Celebrity chef Bobby Flay has a surprising new food specialty, although this time it's for animals that say meow. While most of the world seems to have gone to the dogs, Bobby Flay is a cat person and says it's time for felines to get their due. As an only child with a working mother who he says was a crazy cat lady, the celebrity chef jokes that he was basically raised by cats. Flay has designed a nutritionally balanced menu for the cats that provides the right protein and hydration to meet their daily needs. Bobby's six-year-old furry friend Nacho there has his paws into the project, always watching him put together ingredients in his home kitchen. The new Bobby Flay brand is called Made by Nacho. Some of the proceeds will go to the Every Cat Health Foundation and will also support the Best Friends and Animal Society's No Kill Shelter. Well, coming up at the bottom of the hour here at 5.30, the toll this pandemic has taken on kids. Yeah, we're going to go into what a new study found when it comes to how children are being impacted. That and much more is coming up next. But first, here's a quick live look at downtown Binghamton. Howard's going to have a full check on the forecast for us when we return.